Q&A? Q&A. There we go. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the first presenter, the poster boy of the creative writing department, a passionate poet himself, Douglas Payne. across the back, a man born at the tail end of a dead century to witness in his lifetime the tanks and stinking trenches of corpses piled high, the indiscriminate embrace of the atom bomb, the jungles of Central Asia turned to a blazing red night light, light while hippiedom dreamed its peaceful pipe dream. And all the same, he was a waif like you and me, holding down jobs until he puked them up like bad eggs, traversing marriage after marriage, affair after affair, quick as one skips through puddles of mud. At 17, he went to a brothel and left with the clap. <laughs> He left the College of New York because all of the books were full of dust and empty of life. Soon, we have a working man married to a pregnant pianist, tickling typewriter keys as cradles roar, and soon a little alien nips at his heels, one circles around his days. Wait, wait, what about this infamous banned book? We're so Bored. You're squirming around in your chairs like worms on hooks. Where's all the sex, the hot, filthy, godless sex? <laughs> Miller kicked the nest and shacked up with a Broadway dancer. And yeah, she moved all right. She moved like a goddamn tornado. Her moves rolled in waves of praise and punishment. But all through that, the thrash and hum of thrust and moans and sweat. So he takes her from the dregs at Lady Liberty's feet all the way to the Champs-Elysees, and there she leaves him out to dry. That is June, or Mona, as she is called in the book, or Kali, goddess of time and death, a rose by any other name, whomever. <laughs> Women, we love your sprawling hormonal bouquet, all the fevered adoration mixed in with emotional maladies and the burning swirl of sex. We marvel at how you present to us your heart, your brain, and your cunt on a plate. All three wide open and raw. It is a rough and welcome dessert. <laughs> Where, wa where was I? Oh yeah, that's right. Miller, alone, Paris, Paris, 1930. At the beginning of Tropic of Cancer, he writes, I have no money, no resources, no hopes. I am the happiest man 
a lie. <laughs> there is the whole book. He lives entirely on the charity of others, eating their food, drinking their wine, screwing their wives and girlfriends. <laughs> he makes a meager sum proofreading for the newspaper. It gives him time to think, to reflect. We are brought into his mind, and we become lost there. We have no choice but to be enraptured on his meditations on the harsh impossibility of love and the strange joy to be found within the deep pit of poverty. Miller's pockets empty, his bowels empty, his heart full, ready to burst like a balloon. He says the world is, quote, rotting away, dying piecemeal. But that is all well and good for Miller. He's laughing out loud, waiting for someone to put down this dead stray dog that is the world, to make a cathedral out of its bones, to dance around it. He's dancing already. The world is already a corpse. It is six billion gutless, stern-faced assholes sitting on the bomb waiting for the great earthquake. Miller is a man out of time. His feet stand in Gomorrah, but his head is stuck down in the sands of Eden. He is joking, cajoling, guffawing with glee. He is about town, about rooms, and buried in the loveliness of women. Lona, for example, who Miller claimed was all cunt in a glass ass in which you could read the history of the Middle Ages. <laughs> hey, could you, could you stop saying the C word? <laughs> hey, hey, you only know this book on behalf of the dirty bits anyway. Burn this damn thing! Send it to trial! <laughs> well, that was in 61 when Grove Press put it out in the States at last. All the time before that, banned. Why? Well, because of one, fucking. <laughs> Two, fucking. <laughs> and three, well, fucking. <laughs> you only got cancer off the boat from Paris, smuggled in someone's luggage, or some rough bootleg brought into the world through somebody's basement printing press. I hear William Blake, the 18th century British poet, quite controversial in his own right, his words ring out from the, gra from the grave. I was in a printing house in hell and saw the method in which knowledge is transmitted from generation to generation. This wasn't Grove Press's first trial. They defended Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence, and the band was overturned in 1959. Grove published the unexpurgated version of that novel the, that same year. Grove founder Barney Rossette admitted that he acted as an advocate of Lawrence, a well-known and respected author, in order to gain leverage to publish Tropic of Cancer. <laughs> Miller had good luck in the courts, same as he had in all else. I mean, he came to Paris, a broke ne'er-do-well, and remained there with the well-to-do Anais Nin, a somewhat infamous writer herself, stuffing money into his pockets and popping snails into his mouth. Nin put up the money to print his book. For Miller, those gorgeous legs of hers were wide open. Any man who may achieve that can win a court case. <laughs> Back to the trial. The final ruling on cancer was ultimately decided by the Supreme Court in 1964 in Grove Press versus Gerstein. They made a ruling in Jacobellis versus Ohio that same day when a movie house proprietor came under fire for showing a racy French film entitled The Lovers. Some relevant excerpts from that case. The test for obscenity is whether the average person applying contemporary community standards, the dominant theme of the material, taken as a whole, appeals to prurient interest. Mm -hmm. 
material that deals with sex in a manner that advocates ideas or that has literary or scientific or artistic value or any other form of social importance may not be held obscene under the applicable standard. The contemporary community standards by which the issue of obscenity is to be determined are not those of the particular local community from which the case arises, but those of the nation as a whole. The film is not obscene under the applicable standard. So there you have it. This exact same ruling was made for cancer later that day based on the precedence of a case decided only